I think we've all been too led by sci-fi and think that there is one metaverse. I think the metaverse is a much more subtle, total existence that's not based around one thing. That's like saying we only use Facebook as our platform. We will choose which parts of the metaverse to interact with, much as we choose which parts to be online. Would you say, what's the relationship between crypto and the metaverse? Would you say that crypto is perhaps like the epicenter of the metaverse because we can actually instantiate our digital assets? Or is that just the perspective of a crypto maxi like myself? We all talk about the metaverse as if we know what it is, but when everyone, when anyone defines the metaverse, everyone gives a different definition. So Raul, in, in your mind, what the hell is the metaverse? The metaverse is where we live a larger percentage of our life in the digital world than we do in the physical world. That includes augmented reality, virtual reality, 3D and 2D. We are in the metaverse now, essentially, right? We're chatting as if we're sitting in the same room having a coffee, right? We're so used to it now that it doesn't feel like a barrier at all. That's the metaverse. The metaverse is when I can instant instantaneously pay you money and we don't care what rails it goes across. That's the metaverse. The metaverse is the fact that Apple have now put things in your phone that ping five million times a second, I believe it is, that map out your everywhere you are and will create an augmented reality map of the world in granular detail. That map of the world will help you navigate everything. That is the metaverse. The metaverse is not just the Ready Player One gaming world. It's, it's the digitization of everything where we spend most of our lives being digital. And right now we wouldn't say, oh, we're, we're living our lives digitally, but we are, right? Because the majority of what we're doing right now, even though we're living in physical spaces, we're actually concentrating and putting the focus of our attention in the digital world. And that's how I think about it. It's that entire nexus where everything comes together and becomes digitally fluid. Would you say, what's the relationship between crypto and the metaverse? Would you say that crypto is perhaps like the epicenter of the metaverse because we can actually instantiate our digital assets? Or is that just the perspective of a crypto maxi like myself? Well, we've got to be honest with ourselves that gaming existed without crypto. But what crypto changed was proven ownership in a digital world. So that was a fundamental building block that I think was necessary, much like we could, we had the internet, but we didn't have this transfer of value mechanism. So I think that they're, they're one in the same, you know, we also use the, the term web 3.0. It's all basically the same thing. It's that seamless digital integration where we don't need to use the physical realm. Um, and I think that's, and I think crypto is the only way that we can have ownership within that world. We can transfer other ways, but we can't have that trusted ownership, which I think is the most important part of it all. Because in which think... case it's it's nothing, right? It's not uh, world. Yeah. I'm not thinking of it as an Ethereum thing. I'm thinking of tokenization allows for the tokenization of culture, mm. which is the, the release of value from culture. Um, and I, I spend a lot of time in this space on a lot of things. I've got a project that I'm setting up within this space. Uh, and it's not to do with NFTs per se. I think NFTs are the first manifestation of culture. Um, you know, I think the DAO movement is culturally interesting. Um, I think the social tokens is going to be cult culturally enormous. Um, I, I noticed that, you know, there is currently coalescing around cultures. Do you own a punk or do you own an ape or whatever it is? Some of that will last, some of it won't last. I mean, a ton of the tail of that stuff will not it's just vaporware, but that's fine. Everyone kind of knows they're having fun and doing it. But culture as an investment is the big thing that's coming. I can't express how big that is. But don't forget, for everybody, music is the soundtrack to your life, or sports, or all of these things. If you even think back, what was I doing in, in 2011? You kind of think back to what music it was on, or what big events, what spot, they're all cultural. Culture is what, is one of the things that drives humans or gives them, it's one of the great reward systems humans have, is culture. 
and we've never been able to profit from it. In fact, just the brands did themselves that sold into culture. But this way, we get to participate in culture in a more meaningful way. I think it's just, it's a revolution. I think we've all been too led by sci-fi and think that there is one metaverse. I think the metaverse is a much more subtle, total existence that's not based around one thing. That's like saying we only use Facebook as our platform. We will choose which parts of the metaverse to interact with, much as we choose which parts to be online. But I do think it's extremely powerful that you can be a kid in Ethiopia, you can have an avatar, and you could go to online Harvard and compete. And you can't have racism, sexism, or the fact that you're not in the same country and don't have the same advantages. These things are game-changing for society globally. But it also means globally we have to compete with a lot of people. <laughs> and there's, you're, gonna, you're gonna onboard a lot of people into the global workforce, but I think it's all good. I think it's, it's going to create GDP in its own right that is above the kind of GDP of the world, of the physical world as we know it. And I talk about, you know, like social tokens being a layer of value above equity. I think the metaverse is a layer of GDP that exists outside of physical GDP. And I've talked of it akin to discovering the Americas. You discover a new part of the world that you didn't think existed and suddenly your entire view of the world has to change because now you can create more. And you yeah. know, people have this very pie view of the world and you take a piece of pie out and it doesn't work that way. The pie can grow. And I think this is the pie about to explode. Does that change this issue that we've got with below trend GDP growth driven by demographics and the lowering of population, right? Because it, because GDP growth used to be, um, used to be uh, population growth plus productivity. Productivity is going up, population growth is going down in almost every country. But maybe GDP per capita is about to explode because of the opportunities of discovering this new world. The other way I, I get people to get their heads around it is when I grew up, Russians were poor. And then something magic happened around 19, about really, really happened about 2002, is Russians became rich. Phenomenally, ridiculously, repulsively rich. In the it was the fastest accumulation of wealth in all recorded human history. Because basically, they just handed over all of the mines and the oil fields and the chemical plants to a bunch of Russians. And it went from state ownership to private hands. Um, and that was new GDP. It was brand new, it just came out of nowhere. Because you dug oil out of the ground and we're gonna create a whole new metaverse. And, it, and it's infinite in size.